Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising trilogy, comprised of the Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again. Each book is a compilation of features about cruisers and cruise and travel personalities from around the world. It's the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul, and this week on the Joy of Cruising podcast, I am delighted to welcome John Roberts, the embodiment of in-the-loop travel. I featured John and in-the-loop travel in Cruising Interrupted in a section called the Globetrotters, which focus on world travelers who transcend cruising. John is a consummate cruiser. He has sailed 120 cruises and has a wide breadth of cruising experience, from mega ships to luxury craft to expedition cruises to Antarctica. Whenever I am close to booking a, tr- a ship, and I wish it were one of the luxury vessels John blogs about, I first check to see if John has a review up, and he always does. Welcome, John, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Hi, Paul. How are you today? I'm doing well. Doing well. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm doing a little bit of traveling. I'm on my way sort of in a deep freeze in the... uh, Midwest, making my way back from my wife's parents' house in Wisconsin. We're in Lincoln, Nebraska now. We had to hunker down. Uh, we had a big hailstorm and deep freeze in this part of the country. But on my way, my way back home to Colorado. Well, safe travels. So thank you. It's kind of a warm up for some of the trips I got coming later. So I'm getting myself acclimated to some of these Arctic conditions. Well, we'll, we'll be we'll be asking about those. Uh, but yeah, starters. For starters, tell the listeners about In The Loop Travel. All right. So that is a uh, website, um, intheLoopTravel.com, and some social media platforms also will be found under In The Loop Travel. I do writing there covering cruise travel, uh, mainly active travel fitness thing. And I also have um, a business where I have clients that I write and do some freelance work for, or some web- websites and magazines around the world. So how did you get started with In The Loop Travel? Um, Actually, it's coming up on 10 years ago now in April, and um, it started from my passion for travel and cruise. I used to be in the newspaper industry for about 15 years, and that started to fall on a little harder times with some layoffs and cutbacks and things like that. So I took my journalism knowledge and my passion for travel and sort of branched out into my own and, and ventured out to, to do some more traveling and, and uh, do some writing in that arena and um, slowly build up my audience and, and my website that way. Now, one of the things that distinguishes your uh, uh, website and blog from, from other uh, uh, cruise uh, bloggers is that fitness is covered extensively on your website. I know that is important to you. Talk about that. Yeah, I um I personally used to play sports a lot and I and I'm into fitness. Um as we age, I like to think that being fit and doing things like that help you uh live a better, more healthy life, but when it comes to travel, it's also a fun way to be able to travel a little better. Um you can enjoy things a little more. You can always say yes to some of the hikes you can go on, uh do bike rides in Europe, things like that. Even even the mundane things you might not think about getting through the airports can be a little easier and lifting your own luggage and doing things like that um, is a good reason to sort of stay in shape and, and think of your uh, fitness and, and health as, as you think about it alongside your travels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, one thing we don't like to talk about too much is COVID, but I recall when I interviewed you for Cruising Interrupted, a couple of years ago, you know, we were we were in the lockdown or going into the lockdown. And uh, one of the things that you uh, along the lines of fitness, one of the things that, that you were thinking about uh, getting into was uh, I can't remember if it was a 5K, 10K or, or, or marathon. Did you ever did you ever do that? Well, 
Well, the funny thing is, is um, like many things that were happening in 2020, uh, we did have a lot of free time. So I did say, well, I'm, I'll, I'll make it a, a thing to do because we can't do much traveling. I will train for a marathon, try to do my first marathon. As it turns out, that did event did get canceled. So I still have yet to do that marathon. But I do a bit of running still. Um, no organized events. My travel schedule doesn't really allow me to plan for being around for any particular events. Um, trips will come up and, and things like that. But I do mix it in. But I did. Yeah, I'm disappointed to say I never did get to do that uh, sort of goal of completing a marathon yet. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to uh, fitness, uh, adventure is integral to your cruising journey. Give us a sense for a few of the greatest adventures you have experienced. Um, well, this past year was uh, quite busy as travel rebounded. So some of the really fun things I got to go do was um, an exotic trip on the Nile River with Viking, uh, their new ship, Viking Osiris. So I got to explore Egypt. Um, also went to Antarctica, back to Antarctica, actually, in, in uh, December, um, which is always an amazing experience. Uh, from the journey itself on the ship to actually being there and, and, and being among the wildlife and, and doing kayaking and things like that. It's very exciting. And then I did get to go back to Alaska, which is always a favorite destination for a lot of great outdoor activities as well. And my first trip to the Galapagos, I finally got to get that bucket list uh, destination checked off. And that is just an incredible experience. We went to Silver Sea on Silver Origin, their new luxury cruise ship down there. Now, I, I am going on my first uh, trip to Alaska in a, in a few months, uh, although I, I don't... Uh, expect to do a whole lot of outside activities like like you would do uh, what, what kind of things did you do when you were in alaska well we did um we did what you call a lot of like um kayaking um uh, shore walks um a little bit of hiking into the uh, native forests that they have down there in southeast alaska and generally on this particular cruise it was maybe more of a hybrid sort of expedition type or traditional crews sort of mixed together. It was on Ocean Victory from mm -hmm. um, American Queen Voyages. So it gave a little mix of what a lot of people might enjoy, whether you want to relax or get out there and do some active travel. A lot of things were um, Zodiac tours based around seeing the glaciers and going into the fjords and things like that. Now, you have an incredibly diverse cruising history so that we can all experience it for a few minutes uh, vicariously through you. Uh, tell us about the most luxurious vessel you've experienced. Um, I do tend to uh, like being on the small ship uh, adventures these days, um, but some of the, the most luxurious ones I have had in recent years have been on uh, Regent Seven Seas, which is really known for being a high-end cruise line. And they have the uh, ships uh, Region 7 Seas Explorer and Region 7 Seas uh, Splendor sister ships, about 740, 750 passengers each. And they are just uh, over the top with the luxury. You've got the huge amount of space per passenger on board, all the dining and the accommodations, your cabins, amazing service, the restaurants, the food. So if you, if you are looking for a splurge, that is that is one that I will never forget being on on those ships. Now I know that uh, you know from what we've uh, talked about so far, the the listeners probably think that you know you you do just adventure and luxury cruising, but I also know that you are a, a big proponent of uh, the mega ships. Uh, talk about some recent uh, uh, cruises on your favorite uh, traditional mega ships. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Um, there's a Lure of the Seas, which is one of the original giant ships from Royal Caribbean relocated down to Galveston, Texas. So it was kind of a pleasure to be able to take my friend uh, Kevin on his very first cruise ever and to do it on such a large ship like that that has, you know, all the activities on board, so many venues, all the entertainment, skating rink. Um, you can do. Uh, water sports up at the top on the, you know, 
the surfing simulators and, and the zip line and things like that. So he was just overwhelmed and wowed. And I also did get to cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line's new Norwegian Prima when it debuted in Iceland before it came over. So those are a couple of the, the, the ships and the large ships, mega ships that I was excited about. And it's always great to get back on those big ships because there's a there's a different type of energy there, of course, and, and there's all sorts of things to do. And, and it's great for families and friends when they want to have special outings and have a lot of options for activities. So you were on the uh, inaugural cruise for uh, uh, Prima. Did you get to uh, see Katy Perry? I understand she was the godmother. Yeah, she was a godmother and she was around the ship and she was actually enjoying the cruise. I know a lot of um, god mothers. Uh, there's some men who are god people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what the term is there for godfathers, I guess, on, on some ships. I know, I know uh, Pit, a lot Pit, of those. Pitbull is a uh, godfather. Pit, Pitbull was as well, yeah. So uh, he sort of set the trend and, and, and got some men involved. But a lot of times those people that are on board and, and aren't or they sort of pop in, do the event and leave. She actually cruised and was with her family. Orlando Bloom was on board. She gave a concert and they were participating in some of the game shows and they seemed to really enjoy it. So it was, it was kind of neat to see celebrities even enjoying cruising as much as we do. And, and added uh, unexpected treat. So, so I know that you are a contributing writer to Quirky Cruise. Uh, we had them on uh, the show uh, recently. What's the quirkiest vessel you ever covered for them? Yeah, um, yeah. Heidi and Ted are great over there at Quirky Cruise. They're building a nice site for people who are aficionados of small ship cruising. And I would say in some of the recent contributions I had to them that I really liked a lot were that trip to Egypt on Viking Osiris. Um, she gives me a lot of space to write all my experiences and a lot of photography that gets displayed there. So that is awesome. And I also went uh, in the Caribbean on Sea Dream Yacht Club. So many people have been telling me about what a great experience this is. You're on an older ship, about 40 years old, but the service and food is just incredible. And they have a lot of active things you can do from their water sports marina. So he had a great time on that ship, and I was able to write about that for them as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you working on uh, at In The Loop Travel uh, right now? Well, I like I said, I had a really busy year last year, so I took January to sort of like uh, refresh and relax after such a busy travel schedule and catch up on some of the work and the content that I'm trying to create for the website and some of my clients and set my schedule for the new year. And we're going to be off and running again um, with a lot of trips coming up this year. Uh, we're going to Ch uh, Chile for a Patag Patagonian Fjords cruise with Viking on Viking Octantis, one of their two new expedition ships. Um, in general, for In The Loop Travel, uh, you can go check out the website, in intheloop.travel.com, but it is going to be redesigned by summer. So I'm putting some work into that. It's going to have a lot better look as well. So those are some of the things I'm busy working on right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you kind of alluded to it already, but let us know, how, how do we follow In The Loop Travel uh, on social media? I, I know you, you mentioned your website. Uh, how, how else right. do we keep up with John? Right. In addition to the website, I have, um, I'm active on YouTube. We have a nice YouTube channel that puts a lot of reviews out and ship tours and room tours so people can really get a look at what they're getting into on their trip. I'll do vlogs and sort of give tours of the ship. And so I'm on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and Twitter, and all of those will be found by searching for In The Loop Travel. So let's uh, let's uh, shift a little to the future. So you, you you kind of mentioned what you have booked near term. Any anything else to add to that? Yeah, the the, the trip uh, to Chile, and then beyond that, I'm going to go to the Baja Peninsula and the Sea of Cortez with Scenic on Scenic Eclipse. Uh, later in the year, I'm going to be going to Japan for the first time. I'm excited about wow. that uh, on Windstar. Yeah. 
and um, a couple uh, European river cruises with some new ships on the Danube, and a couple of trips to the Arctic with um, National Geographic Resolu uh, Resolution uh, Lindblad expeditions, as well as a new ship coming out for a company called Swan Hellenic. Mm -hmm. They have a new ship that will be starting and sailing in the mm -hmm. Arctic. It'd be my first time doing Arctic cruiser on Svalbard. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I mentioned to this to you uh, one time uh, on social media, but uh, I'll state it again for the uh, world to hear. If you are uh, looking for an administrative assistant to help you carry uh, bags on some of these uh, luxury vessels, <laughs> uh, I I'm available. All right, all right. I would definitely keep that in mind. I'll put you in my Rolodex. <laughs> hey, uh, what's, what's, <laughs> what's on your buck? How, do, how, how does a guy who goes on these unbelievable uh uh, vessels uh, have a bucket list, but but I'll ask anyway. What's on your bucket list? Well, true enough, there there's a lot I've done, and I'm very fortunate. But this world is so big and wonderful that there's plenty left to do. And of course, life is too short, so I I try to keep going. I've not been to Australia yet, so I'd love to travel all around Australia. I figure I'm gonna need a big chunk of free time when I go over and do that. And also, um, I need to travel more in Africa. I'd love to do a a proper African safari, and, and and that is high, high on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. And do a trek up maybe to see the um, gorillas in, in Rwanda as well. Mm -hmm. Do you do you do much uh, uh, land travel anymore? Is it, is it almost exclusively cruises? Um, I do a bit of land travel, but the cruise industry is thriving and does keep me very busy. And it's, it's nothing to complain about to be doing all these cruise trips, but I... I do envision a time where I would like to maybe set a schedule that's more in some of these destinations on land that I'd really like to see, but no complaints right now. I'll stay busy on the ships. Mm -hmm. So John, we're going to shift gears right now uh, and talk about a couple of uh, fun cruise questions and then perhaps an oddball question. You've probably been asked this before. I always like to ask this of, of guests so that I can get some ideas. Uh, what's your favorite cruise drink or cruise dish or both okay um the, the if people know me and follow a little bit of my social media they'll they'll understand that i'm really a big craft beer guy so i will drink every craft beer you have available on the ship i love to get a taste of the region i'm sailing in what they're putting out what they offer so i'll always i'll always defer to a beer over a wine or a mixed drink actually and as far as a cruise dish, uh, the food, I, I'm not that picky eater. Um, I like some staples, like I'll always try to evaluate the burgers available and the pizzas and things like that. But if I'm traveling to a special place, I definitely like to try the food of that region or destination. Like in Southeast Asia, I'll try a lot of the fish dishes and the noodle dishes and, and try to see what the spice levels are cranked up to and things <laughs> like that. So. I'm I'm up for a little little bit of everything. It's always going to depend on the destination. So just as you are an adventurous traveler, you sound like you are an adventurous uh, eater. Yeah, yeah. My mom would be surprised. I used to push away a lot of the, the strange food on my plate when I was younger, but I'm branching out there a little more. So so let me be nosy. What's the most unique dish you've eaten in in in, in the exotic lands you visited? All right. I've done a, um, a, a street food tour in Cambodia, so that got kind of weird. And um, <laughs> we, were eating, uh, we were eating like little frogs and tarantulas on a stick and things like that, scorpions. So that was probably the most exotic uh, dishes I've had. All righty then. Frogs and tarantulas <laughs> on a stick. Uh, I I, I uh, hope I hope to uh, emulate your uh, traveling uh, 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 experience, but I won't be uh, emulating your uh, uh, willingness <laughs> to try some foods. Yeah. Um, so the next, uh, uh, what I hope is a fun question: w What's your most memorable, or funniest? or even most embarrassing cruise experience? Um, well, sort of quirky and unusual, I would, I would think is um, one of the early cruises I did on, uh, on one of the big ships. If, if people out there, your audience probably remembers the Royal Caribbean and Celebrity, they have a, a late night adult sort of scavenger hunt 
uh, contest competition called the Quest. And I uh -huh. can remember, I can remember a group of new friends, some ladies uh, deciding that I was going to be the one who they would dress up and put a bra on and a and a dress wrap me in a dress and put makeup on. So imagine my ugly mug all dressed up. It, 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 I had to be the most unattractive woman you've ever seen in high heels up there on the stage. But that was that was a hilarious night. Uh, uh, photos, please. Yeah, I was gonna say I've got there. There are photos, but you will not be seeing them. How, how's the saying go? Uh, photos or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, finally, John, you, you have a very large uh, following, and uh, uh, let me say welcome to the many In The Loop travel fans who are listening. Uh, share one thing that my listeners and your followers don't know about John. All right. Well, like I mentioned early, early on in our talk, um, I did come from a newspaper background. I used to be a sports writer, so... Um, I have a huge passion for sports and sports trivia. And if you catch me around, we're going to talk sports all the time. That's just something I love to do. So I'm, I'm a big sports fan and I, I love, I love those competitions and, and watching sports and playing trivia games and cruise ships often have uh, trivia contests. I really enjoy that. Who, who speaking of sports, who's your favorite uh, team and who's your favorite athlete? Um, curious to me is I have a, grew up in upstate New York, but I never took to those regional teams. So I've got kind of a diverse group of uh, sports teams I root for. It's the Minnesota Vikings, uh, the Cincinnati Reds, and the Philadelphia 76ers. You're all right with me, John. All right. Finally, we're going to put you to work. Please tell the listeners who is the winner uh, of this week's coffee of the joy of cruising or cruising interrupted. All right, everybody, big drum roll here. We've got a winner, and it is going to be Janet Horde Mercer. Congratulations. All right, so Janet is a member of the Joy of Cruising podcast group. Anyone who joins that group or either uh, uh, enters uh, at my website is eligible to rent a free book. So I'll be uh, following up with her shortly. Thank you very much, John. Uh, continued best wishes to In The Loop Travel. Uh, you do so much in the cruising world. Um, I'm pretty sure if 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 uh, you're willing, we would love to have you back sometime in, 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 the, in the not too distant future. Best wishes and, and take care of yourself. Thanks so much, Paul. Always a pleasure to talk to you. And thanks for listening, everybody. Travel adventurously. All right, John. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Joy of Cruising and Cruising Interrupted can be ordered at the link on the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com, each for $16.99 plus shipping. Order the soon to be released, The Joy of Cruising Again, also at the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com for $18.99. For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get four dollars off again the discount code joy of cruising podcast enter to win a copy of the joy of cruising or cruising interrupted while supplies last at the joy of cruising podcast.com by joining the joy of cruising podcast facebook group or both to increase your chance to win a winner will be announced on each show please leave us a review and tell a friend about us Thank you. We hope you enjoyed the brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.